Hi everyone and welcome to this week's EBC video. You've caught me here, I was just thinking about digging a hole. Uh, we're looking at Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30 this week and there's a hole in this parable. No, an actual hole. Uh, as you're thinking about this parable here, it is Jesus telling a story about a master with three slaves. Uh, and that master is about to go off and he goes to each of these three slaves and he says to the slaves, I'm going to give you something according to your ability. And he gives each of them some money. To the first slave, he gives the first slave five talents. Uh, to the second slave, he gives three talents. And to the third slave, he gives one talent. And then off he goes. And the first slave uh, takes those five talents and makes five more talents with them. The second slave takes his three talents and he makes three more talents with them. The third slave with just the one talent, uh, he decides that uh, his, he knows his master is pretty, pretty mean. Um, he reaps what he doesn't sow. Uh, he gathers what he didn't scatter. And so he decides that the safest thing to do is actually just to dig a hole and put his talent in the hole. Well, when the master comes back, he brings his slaves back to him and he says, how have you done? And the first slave says, see, you gave me five talents and I've made five more. And the second slave, you gave me three talents and I've made three more. The third slave says, master, not a great start, by the way, he's about to say, I know that you're a very mean individual and that you reap what you do not sow and that you gather what you don't scatter. So I buried my talent in a hole. Well, the master says, so you knew all those things about me, did you? And you still buried it in a hole. At least if you'd invested it at the bank, it would have made interest and you could have given me back what I gave you with interest. It's actually a part of the parable in the, in the Bible. And so the master takes back the money, gives it to the ones who did good for him and throws the slave out into the darkness. And when we first look at that parable, there's some things that are a little off-putting about it, right? I mean, let's start with the obvious one for a moment. It talks about slaves, and we really do not like that, right? In our modern times, we know slavery is absolutely wrong. And so we're trying to avoid that piece of the aspects here, right, all by itself. All right. Also, if we're talking about something that feels like the kingdom of heaven, this is a very strangely capitalistic uh, type of story, right? We've got people who are off investing and maybe supposed to put it in the bank, if nothing else, and making more money with the money they have. And it sort of feels like a, if you have money, you can make money type of story. So that seems maybe a little off-putting too. And then we have another aspect of it, which doesn't maybe make a lot of sense to us in our modern lives, which is we've got this thing called this talent. Right, there's a, what is that after all? It feels like maybe one got five coins and one got three coins, and then a person got a coin and he put it in the ground. Well, what we don't know until we go and we look is that a talent is a really large sum of money. In First Kings, a talent was actually equated to the value of a man's life. And in, in other commentators, they have said that a talent might be worth about 20 years worth of labor. So if you think about that from the standpoint of what that would mean today, one talent might, in, for 20 years of work, might actually be worth maybe one or one and a half million dollars. So when the slave is burying his talent in a hole, he's burying one and a half million dollars in a hole to do nothing with it. Well, I'm gonna encourage you to get past some of those messages that sort of are a little off-putting at the beginning of this parable. And that all by itself is, is sort of a lesson for us, right? That sometimes when we're listening to something that, uh, so, uh, so whether it's a sermon, whether it's a message from someone else, whether it's someone on the radio, whatever it might be, and we're hearing something about God that doesn't really just ring for us in the first minute, sometimes we shut down before we've heard that message. So just one thing to be thinking about is not shutting down before you've considered the whole message. But the other thing to be thinking about, of course, is that what are we talking about when we're talking about slaves being given talents? Well, and of course, there's a bit of an irony here is that the word talent as a unit of measure, of course, now in the English language, talent, uh, it's a pretty darn good clue, right? Because the answer is uh, we know that God has given us talents, things to do, things that we have as gifts that we can do for others. And if I said to you, for instance, that I'm going to come into my backyard, I'm going to dig a hole and I'm going to put... Um, you know, my ability to sing praises to God in a hole. 
you'd know that doesn't make any sense in the first minute. If I said uh, that uh, we're gonna go and bury someone's kindness and generosity, willingness to do things for other in a whole, you know, well, no, of course you're not gonna do that. That would be, it would be no good. But that's the point of the parable, putting the gifts you've been given in a whole, not using them, holding into yourself, that's what this parable is about, is not doing those things, actually using the things God has given you to do those things for others. And if you think about your gifts as being a piece of God's glory in the world, then when you do things with that glory, you're making more glory by doing those wonderful things for others as well. So rather than a capitalistic investment, what we're looking at here is the opportunity to spread God's word, spread God's glory, spread his love throughout the world. All right, everyone, have a great week. I don't think I'll be digging this hole anymore. <laughs>